100%. Do we want to move across into the Rebels? Harry, anyone that we should know for the Rebels? The Rebels are a funny one because they've got some established players, but there's a, there's not that many players that I expect that people will know that could have a big year. There's only one name for me that stands out, and that's Carter Gordon. Um, look, he's a Reds junior, another one that's left that Reds system. Like so many players are trying to escape over there. Um, massive, massive star of the future. I think they were very disappointed when he signed. Reds just <laughs> killed himself over there. Um, in 2017, he, he was the playmaker. He played for both Queensland under 16 and the schoolboys in the same year. 2018, he played Aussie schoolboys and then was fast-tracked in the under-20 side. And I know he was in hot competition with Rishjan Pasatoa for the starting fly-half role. And, you know, there's, there's been enough hype around Pasatoa <clears throat> to know exactly what that means, that he was in direct competition with him. Um, played alongside Joey Waltz and Will Harris, Billy Pollard, Angus Bell, a very talented year. And he's a man that made his debut and started to make his mark last year for the, the Rebels. And we expect him really to play 10 all through the year this year. So I, I think he's in for a big, big season. Yeah, I think that's fair. Rev, do you have anyone that sits in that column? Yeah, uh, I struggle with this as well. I had a lot more that um, would probably be in the, you know, might not know. But the, the one that came to mind, and if you're a Sevens fan, you probably know him as Jarrell Skelton. Um, yeah. He's he's still very young. It's, it surprises me that he's only 22 at the moment. Um, and he, I think he got two caps last year, maybe for, you know, a handful of minutes. But he's, he's a big body still because he's played a bit of flanker. He's now really just transitioning to the back line and, I think trying to you know, pack on a little bit of size, but stay mobile. But just with his size and offload ability and footwork, if he gets minutes, I'm, I'm very keen to see what he can do. But yeah, there's probably more names that um, we don't know. So we might uh, dive through some of them. Yeah, for sure. I think one name that stands out for me, let me scroll down because we've got lots listed here, but one that excites me when I see him on the, the little sheet we've got here, if I can actually get to him, is Vidogu. Um, yeah. I think we got, you know, Fijian Sevens background, um, Fijian under 20s as well. Really exciting player that's come across for them, was there last year. Um, just your typical dynamic um, style Fijian winger with a lot of hype around him. But for some reason, we didn't get to see, you know, really get to see him last year, which was a bit, bit frustrating. I know he had an injury or so, but um, hopefully this is a year, I think they need a winger to step up and he could be someone if he gets that shot that could lock himself into that jersey. I, I do get the feeling that the Rebels are doing their very best to try and keep their squad size that they use small. Like I think they know the challenge they face with holding talent down in, in Melbourne and they're trying to make sure that they get as much continuity in their side as possible. So it is hard for some of these yeah. sevens converts and, and new <clears throat> signings to break into the side, but uh, definitely a very, very talented player. For me, I've picked a man that did start to get some minutes last year. I've gone for Reese Van Neck, 22-year-old tight head that played his first three games. And each one, he played more and more minutes, including I think he played 27 minutes against the Crusaders coming on for Kabuz Ilof. <laughs> um, he, he's obviously held in very high regard, an excellent, excellent scrummager at 22. He's already 108 kilos, so he's a big boy. The only thing standing in his way for more time this year is that he's got Pone for Amasili uh, coming back into the starting side, who you would expect to start every single week. Um, but, man, if he gets a chance, I think he's probably two or three years out from being just a very, very high-quality prop, and hopefully he sticks around and we see a little bit more from him this year. Just piling on what we touched on before, he's also a Queensland Reds Academy member, um, <laughs> yep. just fleeing, fleeing what's going on in Queensland. So. Yeah. I was, I was hoping that wouldn't uh, get brought up because he's straight from East Rugby Club. But, yeah, seeing him play club rugby, he just he could hold up any scrum. He was immovable. So I think, you know, his transition at Super Rugby is unreal. Um, but I mean, if we're talking big bodies and people just adding that size, Tamati Yawani, holy dooly. Just seeing the pictures of him, I know that the Rebels have established back rollers. It's going to be pretty hard to crack it in there. But, um, you know, he's a bit over six foot, but 120-ish kilos, and he looks every bit of it um, – I just get that if he gets ball in hand, defenders are just going to go flying. It'll be like bowling. So I, I think he's one of the most exciting. He's 24. He hasn't been capped before, but um, I mean, just give him a chance because I want to see him run. He, he looks like one of those players that are made for these new scoring, the dominant tackles and, you know, yeah. game line carries, that sort of stuff, because he's just an aggressive looking player. Ball in hand. He's, he's only 184 centimetres. So he's six foot, but he's 119 kilos. Yeah, I'm just looking at some photos now of him just tearing up club rugby. And he's like, he looks <laughs> yeah. like he's playing like the under 12s or something. He's just <laughs> such a big <laughs> unit. 
Awesome. Oh, well, hopefully he gets some time. I know if he does get picked up in the starting side for a single week, Kagi will pick him and then hold him for the rest <laughs> of the year. Oh, yeah. He'll definitely be licking his lips. Yeah. Guys, the Reds. I know this might be your soft spot here, Rev. You're not allowed to name every single player in the squad for the record. <laughs> I might just put that out now. Just cross those off then. <laughs> <laughs> players you should know. Um, I might I might go out on a limb here and say Fraser McWright. Uh, clearly he's the name that we should all know, so we won't spend too much time. But I just want to point out that he's only 22 years old. He had a 40-point <clears throat> average across the seven rounds when he started last year, which means that he was sitting in the fourth overall back rower at the time. So if they decide that he's going to be their number seven for this year, not only is he a phenomenal attacking and defensive player, but an excellent fantasy pick as well. And I think the only question is if he's actually going to get consistent game time, considering that they've just got a lot of competition between Scott Young, Liam Wright, and Gary Wilson. He will. I mean, to carry on, like some of these players, like as I said, he's 22, but Ty is still only 21. And, you know, like yeah. to think that he's got 30 caps, um, 16 test caps, he can play anywhere across the back line. Like if he can just stay a healthy season. And he's, he, yeah. he's yeah, been he, for three seasons and he's still a child. <laughs> and he's still been around forever. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm very excited by him. But I mean, half that Reds team is under 24. So you could name a lot of people that are. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna break the rules for one and say Siliasi Vunavalu, 26-year-old. Nice. Like if, if you've got the top NRL try scorer for 2016, 2017 in this squad, he's an exciting player. He's, he's under an injury crowd, cloud at the moment. So he's another guy that's got to get his body right to, to really break into this side. But let's just put this in perspective. 454 minutes last year that he had 12 line breaks. So that's one every 38 minutes. He had 16 tackle busts. That's one every 28 minutes. He had seven offloads, five tries. So he's just absolutely dominant. He played five of his eight games against the Kiwis as well. They weren't Aussie games. They were against the Kiwis. Um, he's just an exciting player. 60 minutes, he played over that three times, averaging 44 points. Yeah, didn't he get the two sort of crossfield chip kicks against the Highlanders? and just yeah. sort of, I mean, surely we're exploiting that this year. They've seen I mean, like, oh, that looks against the, the Kiwis. Was that the Chiefs, was it? If I, we, I don't know, but yeah, if we, it might have if been we get into the Waratahs, I can guarantee you we won't take advantage of that. So hopefully the yeah. Reds will actually <laughs> yeah. use it because the amount of seasons we didn't see them cross-kicking to Falau. Oh, yeah. But then look, his <laughs> he, match against Insane. the Chiefs, in 58 minutes, he got 66 points. So that is what he's capable of, and that's against the Kiwi team. Yeah. So, I mean, the biggest thing is I think they've surely they've now put a physio employed only for Siliasi Vonavalu's hamstring. And Pattaya. <laughs> That's yeah. right. You've got, two, you've got four muscles to look after. <laughs> yeah. Two hammies on him, two hammies on him. That's it. Yeah. Nothing else. Best option. All right. Players you might know, guys. Uh, I'm going to go with Josh Fluke. So he's only 20 years old. Mm. He's actually signed. He's the first player in Australian Super Rugby. I'm not sure about the Kiwis, but the first player to sign through to 2024. So they've got a long-term plans for him. He played four games as a medical joker in 2020 as, a, as an 18-year-old. Then he played another seven last year, and he was already matching it against test-level centres against the Kiwis week in, week out, which... I'm not going to lie, I, I had high hopes for him, but he exceeded all expectations. He is, for a young man that's still got a bit of growing to do into this kind of physical physical level he needs, he's a freak. Uh, I, I think, you know, I think Reb yourself and, and others have already been saying that you want him as the starting outside centre for the team for the year. He's just that good. Oh, he's a freak. And the fact that he, um, I was re-watching the highlights of the Reds from his matches, and I think he bumped off um, Andy Muirhead maybe for that try mm-hmm. down the side to win them. Like, it just... Unreal to be doing that at that age. So, yeah, I, I think he's a great call. And I, I might jump in and add Isaac Henry to the list because, you know, we've got some young centers coming through. Uh, he's he's 22, so a little bit older and plays a lot of inside center and fly half uh, for club. But he, he wrapped up five games. And I think all of them, um, bar one, maybe against the New Zealand sides. So he he really got a baptism by fire, but he looked really good in that Chiefs match. I think he started that one and got a sneaky try early on and helped set up a few others. Um but the nice thing, he's around the six foot, 94 kilos. So, you know, decent size for a center, but um, importantly has the same birthday as me. So it's just going to be one that's close, uh, near and dear to my heart. You're, you're 22 so, as well, are you? Yeah. <laughs> look, yeah. Something, <laughs> can't, can't you tell everyone looking? <laughs> so, something good had to happen on that day. So um, look, the, the, the one for me is Mac really. He's only 19 years old. Um, he played his first couple games at, at fullback last year with 19 carries across those games. 
And he just showed for a small player, he's happy to get amongst it and get involved. And he's just, he appears to be a very dynamic, confident ball in hand player. I really like to see, you know, him get some game time there, that fullback jersey. I know there's a lot of competition. I know he's really, really young, but I think he's got a massive future. Um, and I just want to see him in that jersey. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see more out of him, particularly if he keeps growing his mullet out. To me, that's, <laughs> that puts him right up the ranks immediately. Um, guys, i got one more in this, in the uh, you might not know personally. Um, I'm going to go for Lawson Crichton. So 23-year-old fly half, can play anywhere across the back line. I think uh, Rugby Pass has him as a fullback. He plays 12, but just has all the skills. Um, apparently, you know, Liam Wright called him out in the Pick and Drive podcast. Apparently, he just carves up the first team in training. And he was kind of hindered last year with a patellar issue. He didn't get to play a lot of the preseason. But by all accounts, an excellent, excellent player. And, you know, we talked about what happens if James O'Connor goes down for this side. Obviously, they've got the option of Hamish Stewart. But uh, yeah. they've lost Bryce Hegarty, who was probably their main backup last year. I, I don't think it's out of the question that Wilson Crichton becomes an option from there. And he's obviously very, very good and, a, and a, an absolute talent at 23 years old. There's much to like about him. Um, I think he's the smarter of the Crichtons, obviously, because he's stated that the Reds have not gone to the Brumbies. But um, yeah, he's someone that when he gets minutes will carve up. And it's a good point. We don't have a reserve fly half necessarily in place other than maybe Stewart at a pinch um, who's, you know, racked up a few games there. But I think, you know, as, as we've said, this whole back line, take out two players, they're all under 24. They're all exciting. So can they go wrong? I don't think so. Yeah, look, I, I very fair and you're not wrong at all saying there's no other 10 backup. Very, very early <laughs> days and he's not going to get a crack this year. But just an exciting name in the squad, Tom Liner, at only 17 years old, son of Wallaby great Michael Liner, smarter brother, brother to Louis Liner. Who play, he's the most exceptional over. talent of the brothers, I hear. Yeah, I, he's clearly the smarter player, as Rev alluded to, except for the fact he went to the Reds. Very silly. Um, but, look, he's, he's a long way away from getting a crack in this squad. But who knows? A few things happen. Yeah, apparently, he's a really big talent. He, he might get a shot. Yeah, he, he's obviously come across from Harlequins. They're from their development system as well. So he was he was in and amongst it. And I, I'm very surprised to see him leave his brother Louis, to be honest. But, you know, they, they do talk. Michael does talk about the fact that they are Australian first. So hopefully that means that we can get the uh, both brothers down for the Waratahs maybe, you know, when they can't get a start for the Reds this year. And we can see more of them in the seasons to come. Sounds good to me. That's very charitable of them, I think, you know, to <laughs> dish themselves out like that. 